So the biggest rallying cry Republicans have been using against the Biden administration is the immigration crisis, right? That's they're all about that. So the Senate is working on a bipartisan border security bill to send the House to the House, okay? And it looks like the MAGA wing of the party is taking orders from dear leader, Trump, to make sure that it's dead on arrival. Watch. I just reject the idea that we should reserve a, a, a crisis for a better time to solve it. I don't see how we have a better story to tell when we miss the one opportunity we have to fix it. And we go and say, you know, I would love to have fixed it, but it was election season, so I thought I'd wait. I hope we don't live in a world today in which one person inside the Republican Party holds so much power that they could stop a bipartisan bill. Is this deal dead, effectively? Uh, I hope so. It should be. If it's not dead yet, it should be dead. I mean, there is absolutely no reason to agree to policies that will just further enable Joe Biden. Don't you love it? <laughs> I mean, here's the issue that everybody's talking about, and they're putting the kibosh on it because Trump wa does wants it as an issue when he runs, see? Yeah. That, and he also has said that he hopes the economy tanks. Trump said that. So that he will come in and I alone can fix it. Yeah. Well, it's like setting a house on fire and then calling 911 and being like, aren't you grateful? Right. I called 911. And I think that's this example encompasses the very problem of Trump specifically, <laughs> which is party above people. This issue is not just Republican voters wanting this. Across the boards, the two top issues, and they go back and forth for first, are the economy and the border. This is an issue that is affecting blue states, blue cities, yeah. red states, right. red cities. The country is screaming for help, and they're saying that they would put aside this issue purely for political gains. That is telling you all you need to know about Donald Trump and these Republicans that are potentially tanking this vote. Well, well those those okay. that aren't, the Republicans that, that want to be obstreperous want it because they don't want a Biden win. Right. They don't want Biden to be as successful and his administration to be as successful as it can and as it can and, ha and has it, as it has been. Um, the thing that I, I, I really think people need to understand about immigration, it's not a crisis. It's something that has been an issue in our country from the very beginning. In fact, during the Bush administration and right after, he said his biggest regret was not being able to do more on immigration. Bush said that. Then Obama comes along and really is the only president in my lifetime that has done something. He did DACA, right? He got that Dreamers Act passed. That was a key legislation passed by the Democrats. And the other part about immigration is, it's not the problem that Republicans say it is. They say that immigrants run up crime. That is not true, and it hasn't been true for 140 years mm -hmm. by a Stanford study. They say that immigrants take jobs away from Americans. That is not true. Immigrants actually help the economy. They pay taxes. They start new businesses. They pay money into the American economy, and they bring more jobs because of it. And they often do so, jobs that Americans don't want to do. I think that's a bit of a so, mis understanding of the Republican perspective. Immigration and border security, um, while related issues are separate issues. I believe in more legal immigration of this country. It makes us a stronger, better nation. Uh, border security, I absolutely believe there is a crisis, and I like that Democrats are recognizing it. More than a dozen governors, Katie Hobbs, Governor Hochul, Gavin Newsom, signed on to a letter asking the Biden administration to do more to secure the border for three reasons. We have fentanyl crisis in this country. It's impacted tens of millions of American families. There's a humanitarian crisis. I've been to the El Paso sector. I've been to Count. I have seen human beings living in squalor without housing, without All food. the more reason that to is fix not, it. Yeah, that is not humanitarian. And so there is the national security risk if people can get in right. that we're not vetting. Here's what's cynical about this. Republicans want to solve it in the Senate, a serious body with serious policymakers. McConnell's folks are very confident this will pass the Senate. But Donald Trump is the de facto Speaker of the House. Mike Johnson does not... Mike Johnson doesn't control anything. He's a puppet for Donald Trump. So they literally want to keep this issue alive through at earliest January of next year. That's when an inauguration, God forbid, of Donald Trump would happen. <laughs> it's, it, it is so transparent to the voters. I am with Liz Cheney where I don't really care if House Republicans lose because they've done nothing to earn their majority right now. But Senate Republicans, kudos to them for working across the and, aisle. And let me, let me right. just say um, this, yeah. correct a couple of things you said. The actually, oh, please do. No, the largest piece of immigration legislation that happened in, that's happened in our lifetime mm -hmm. was signed by Ronald Reagan in 1986, mm -hmm. and uh, it was, was that? it was the the, the Simpson-Masoli law. 
uh, of 1986. A huge amnesty. I know this because yeah, I was one won. of the benef yeah. I was well, one of the true. beneficiaries. The so there was a time when Republicans actually wanted solutions, not a political issue on this. And Obama did not pass DACA because he couldn't get DACA passed, so he had it to was issue a, it was an executive an order. Executive order. That's true. And that is but he got it done. horrifying. Horrifying. Yeah, but when you have an executive order, it's a band-aid. It's not That's a real solution. It's not a law. But at least and it, it can be done. it can be undone by other administrations. It can be challenged in court. And that has happened. And the point is that they have kept hundreds of thousands, millions of minors that were brought here through no fault of their own, living mm -hmm. in terror, living in suspense, not knowing if they're going to be able to continue living in the only country they know. And that is immoral. That is horrible. It is also hypocritical, irresponsible, anti-ethical, a complete dereliction of duty for these folks to be saying on one side of their mouth that this is a horrible crisis, and on the other side, be capitulating to Donald Trump. And I, I really appreciate what Mitt Romney said yesterday, yeah. and I want to play that clip, because at least there's one person with a brain left in the Republican Party. Former President Trump has indicated to senators that uh, he does not want us to solve the problem at the border. Uh, he wants to lay the blame for the border at Biden. Uh, and the idea that that someone running for president would say, please hurt the country so I can blame my opponent and help my politics is a, uh, uh, a shocking uh, uh, development. It, he's absolutely right. It, it is absolutely appalling. It shouldn't be shocking but, because this this is the way Republicans play this game. But I don't know why everyone's shocked. And I and I have to say, we're not this shocked. notion that no, I'm shocked. not at all. But this notion also, Mitt Romney said he was shocked. Wow. This notion that you know, immigrants are are bringing in all the fentanyl into this country. We're not. That's, that's, that, that's, that's not that's, true. That's We're talking about drug cartels that exploit a port but of that's also No one is saying economic that, migrants that's to this also, country. Yes, because no you, you that. did say earlier, there's fentanyl being That's is where the 90% of the fentanyl the, in this country comes across it's, the southern it's, border. It's actually where do the opioids not, come from? That's, re that's related. Where's what? Oh, well, opioids, opioids. no, you're talking about the pharma crisis. Yeah, yeah. Let me say and this. There were 300,000, the highest record in history, yes, migrant crossings in December. And I would like to see us actually be a country where we could talk about why don't we streamline the system so people who go through the process can come here legally? Why don't, once they come here, we have a plan to house them, for them to get jobs, for them to get work permits? But having people live on the margins, and I hear this argument a lot of, well, Republican border states actually get more funding, so this is their problem. They are so overwhelmed, even with that additional funding. Then you have Mayor Eric Adams begging for help from the Biden administration. Yeah. They had kids stay home from classrooms for a few days to house migrants, and they went to remote learning. But what do you say about a governor a Abbott who's getting a million dollars to handle the crisis, and he's sending it's, everyone here Texas to the government. It's not enough because it's government. not enough money. I've seen the. I've Why been doesn't there. he send any money? Why doesn't he send any money? He's he, keeping the, the money, but then sending the money. And I also make a distinguishing point here: people that want the border fixed are not someone that don't understand that this is the best option. People are flocking to yeah. this country because they're running from something. But the problem here is it's like a lifeboat. If, if the Titanic, each boat had brought on everyone, they would have all flipped. You only have so many resources. So it's not always a moral issue of saying, I don't understand your plight, I can't bring you. It's saying, we can only keep this floating if we are mindful of the numbers we have and the resources very, we right, have. The four, the four countries that are providing the most number of immigrants are Nicaragua, led mm -hmm. by a left-wing dictator, Cuba, left by a left-wing mm -hmm. left yeah. dictator, Venezuela, mm -hmm. led by a left-wing dictator, and Haiti, which is in complete anarchy right now. So people, when people are desperate, they will do desperate things, including walking thousands yeah. of miles, were, crossing a river. People, and I don't, those migrants people should be prioritized and I don't over believe economic migrants. But you would think well, if, they're escaping, but if they're escaping left-wing dictatorships, you would think the Republicans would be right there and opening their arms to them. Uh, but I, no. mean, yeah. I, I would actually argue the Trump administration had better policy on Venezuela, but that's a conversation for another day.